All right, here we are. We're going to take a trip back to the mid 90s, mid yes. to late 90s. And we're going to talk about a nostalgic piece of retro gaming history that was kind of a flash in the pan. It was here and then like that, it wasn't. Demo discs. They are so cool. And what's really cool about demo discs is back then everything was cartridge based, you know, so if you wanted to play a game or get a feel for a game, you had to rent it. Then they came out with discs and you could get these with magazine subscriptions and it was a game changer. Yeah, so the first four into disc-based consoles is really where all this started, yeah. like you said. So the PlayStation is kind of where my mind goes when I think of demo discs, because those were the first ones I encountered. And it was a really cool time because you could really, like I remember my friend when he got his PlayStation, he had a couple games, but then he would get a lot of demo discs and you could get him in the PlayStation magazine, PlayStation Underground, like at the grocery store. Oh. Yeah, I don't think he ever had a subscription to it, but nonetheless, if you did, you had all the these demo discs and typically you would get to play you know the quarter of a football game or the first level of a game like you know Metal Gear Solid you usually get to play till the elevator where well, you yeah. get to the elevator then it's which, over which is crazy because the beginning of that game there's a long story so mm -hmm. you don't get to play much of the game <laughs> yeah the reason we wanted to talk about this is we just had an episode recently about video game magazines and it's kind of hard to talk about those, you know, past the Nintendo Power era and not talk about demo discs. They were usually packed in, like we said, and they had more content than just the games. You know, oh, yes. one of the ones we went through was this one from PlayStation Underground that we have that disc one is all information based, but it really set the cultural tide for what it was like to own a PlayStation. It, it's so cool. Yeah, it, there's interviews, there's behind the scenes. It shows how to make commercials. It showed what went in to the rumble in the PlayStation 1 controller. Yeah, the first DualShock. Which yeah. was crazy. Like it like opened it up and showed you and I was like, whoa, that's fascinating. Yeah. Each handle is an actuator. That's a hardware term for something that actuates or starts something else. In this case, vibration. The weight on the spindle is carefully balanced to run cool when you're playing long and hot. On one side, the weight is small. On the other, a bigger weight spins. They've got interviews uh, on this disc in particular of a guy that did the, the video game music or score and what it takes to, to accomplish that. And it was just really neat. You felt like watching the bloopers from, you know, the Crash Bandicoot commercials that you were back immersed in the culture of owning a PlayStation. That's something that you don't really get now. Yes, there's demos. Most of them aren't disc based that you can download for free. Yes, and it, but it's not the same. It's just the game and yeah. I know a lot of people Contra Road Corps, for example the demo came out and it kind of ruined that game yeah um, it's just not the same I feel like back then it was a time capsule and it just brought things together like we were playing the Dreamcast ones and I was playing the first Tony Hawk game and it was awesome yeah, it, and what's cool about the Tony Hawk one was it yeah it was just the first level but you could do five things so you could keep playing it playing it and playing mm -hmm. it over and over again and you could just work on tricks yeah so I feel like that for a demo is probably the most expansive you know this was a lot of fun uh, going back and, and revisiting these we lost a lot of time getting screen captured just playing and that's always a fun thing is when you know you got production to do and you get lost in these things so kind of the trajectory of the demo disc at least the first ones that i remember and they're probably i'm guessing was ones on the sega saturn but i remember the playstation playstation in particular and the dreamcast yes and then the xbox came and the xbox had some demos we actually had a bunch of xbox demos recently but sent them off to a really good friend of ours because he's an xbox fanboy <laughs> uh, we figured they were better off in his hands but they made a really good demo disc too what's strange though is after that ps2 era which ps2 really started uh, they did these like jump packs or something and they were they cost like $9.99 for a, a demo disc, right? Really? Yeah, they were no longer as, as prevalent in the magazines. By the time you got to the PS3 360 era, it really started phasing out because internet based internet demos and online became, and became a thing. It was cheaper, they didn't have to publish yeah. everything. I feel like that era changed a lot, not just with video game demos and magazines, yeah. but just gaming in general because of the internet. I mean, it obviously introduced online gaming, which is yeah. badass. Yeah. And this is a whole different topic, yeah. but man, demo discs are so cool. A lot of people were in on it. You know, we have this Pizza Hut one. It was a oh, promo yes. Pizza Hut. You go in <clears throat> and you can get a demo disc for the PlayStation there. And this disc is really cool. I think they had a couple of them. Uh, we only have this one in particular, but you know, you get Crash Bandicoot, Warped Medieval, Metal Gear Solid, Gran Turismo, Tomb Raider 3. It's what, just so neat. What I love about that is growing up, dude, I used to think Pizza Hut was the shit. It was awesome. Yeah. In that demo disc, they're advertising four different types of pizza they were pushing back then. <laughs> yeah. like, that's so cool. Yeah, you know, I just wonder what today's landscape would be like and and what it would do for the sales of gaming or, or what you know if you went into a pizza hut or a papa john's or something and there was a xbox one or ps4 
demo disc that if you bought a large pizza, you could try out these games and you didn't have to piss around with downloading them. I think it was a great way to get you exposure to games. Yeah, it was. Dude, going back and playing some of the demos for games I hadn't played yet, I was like, dude, when is this coming out? Oh, wait, it came out 20 years <laughs> yeah. ago. Like, I want to go back and play them. I was playing NFL Blitz on one of the demo mm -hmm. games, and you only get one quarter. And I was like, no, I want more. I want yeah. I want to go get the game. And then what's cool is when you when you beat the demo, it's like coming, and then it says the date. Yeah. And it's like, ooh, if I was a kid, I'd be waiting for that day. It'd be on, it'd be on my calendar. Yeah, I remember uh, going into grocery stores and making sure if you were to buy a magazine that the demo disc wasn't stolen out of there because that was yeah, a that thing was a too. big issue yeah kids uh, are bad now <laughs> the dreamcast demos i think if you own a dreamcast and you're just getting into collecting grabbing some of these on the on the cheap is not a bad idea because you actually get to play quite a bit with that being said dreamcast i think really kind of shit the bed on their demos because they're very bland when we went from the playstation ones dude the play into those yeah the playstation ones the production the quality yeah. just everything about it was awesome and then the dreamcast ones i mean the games and everything were sweet yeah but it was just very cookie cutter yeah blase you know the the playstation when you pick the game and there's a graphic you know i just think they did a really good job the Dreamcast one, you didn't feel any culture. You didn't feel like you were transported back to the time. But man, those PlayStation ones, oh. holy shit. You were literally back in 98 and just like loving the PlayStation hype. It was so cool. And like this, the, the music in some of these demo discs, oh, they got me hyped. Yeah. Like, I don't know, it was just rock music. It brought me back to the 90s, early aughts. It was just... I just love them because it's a time capsule of the time, it especially is. the PlayStation 1s. It makes me wish when I was younger that I knew about demo discs. I didn't really have anyone growing up or me that had them or knew about them, so I missed out on all of this yeah. fun stuff. It's kind of just a, it's one of those things I think is a relic. You look back and it's like, man, those were really, really cool. And they were only here for such a short time. We already mentioned, you know, if you owned anything during the 8-bit and 16-bit era, the only way you were trying games out is if you could rent them or you'd buy a game and a lot of times you'd be like, man, this game sucked, but I just spent 50 bucks on it. Where in this time frame, I remember playing my Dreamcast demos because I only had a couple games and then I would know like, man, I gotta go get that game. I think it's just uh, something that I'll remember. I, I think it's another thing that will never come back. We're probably never gonna see this again. It's just cool because you know that, that magazine episode we did, it got the wheels turning for this episode. And you've said it several times here, it's a time capsule it really and it is. really is. I think, you know, whether you have some of these or not, literally we jumped on eBay and uh, we had some demo discs, but we packed out and got a few extras um, to do our research research for this episode they're so cheap and they're so freaking fun like if you just want to dabble around on one of the consoles and be like what games do i want to play you get a feel for it and like we found a game literally on the dreamcast last night that we ordered for like 40 bucks because it was so damn yeah, fun but and it's we, not even reviewed and scored that high and we didn't even know it existed yeah should we tell them what it is? Zombies Revenge. Yes, it's part of the House of the Dead yeah. universe. And I, we didn't know it existed. I knew it existed. I always thought it sucked. Like oh. the reviews were, were, were never really that good. And I never got a chance to play it. We put it in and was like, holy shit, we're going to stream this as soon as it it's comes out. It's a run and yeah. gun House of the Dead game with terrible voice yeah. acting. Man, it's freaking fun. And the demo is two player. Yeah. It's like a hybrid. It's a run and gun beat em up. It's, it's, yeah, it's such a it's, weird it's, game. It's awesome. We will be streaming it soon. But what that shows to me, though, is the power of playing a demo. And the fact that the modern generation, we don't have that. Honestly, in most of gaming history, there were no demos. It was, I should say, there were no demo discs. That pocket between like 90, whenever PS1 came out, through about the end of the, the PS3 360 era, most of them kind of vanished. There's been a few anomalies here and there. You know, I think of PlayStation VR. They've okay, got that yeah. sampler game. That's kind of like a demo disc, I feel but, like. But. <clears throat> You have to have a VR, yeah. you know, so it's, and it, yeah. It's not like going to the, the grocery store, grabbing a magazine, and like, man, I get to go home and try six different games. Yeah. What yeah. a cool thing. What a cool freaking thing. And it sucks because it's nostalgia and it's a time capsule, but I don't think it will ever be a thing ever again. No, it, it just really, if, if you're really wanting to dig into demo discs, PS1, Xbox, had some good ones. PS2, but they started charging a lot for those jam jump packs or jam packs, whatever it was called. And then you got into that PS3 360 era, and then it was just kind of... Yep, gone. We're gone. Now it is time to talk about the Colorado Smuggler. This is an IPA. This is a hazy IPA. And what's really cool about this, this is from Big Girl Brewery. They're, for, they're in Iowa. And they smuggled hops from Colorado, which is crazy. I didn't even know that there was like legalities with hops, but apparently there is. And they made this beer yeah. with the hops. And these hops have like a, what, like a hint, uh, I think, of cannabis, right? Cannabis. Aromas, yeah. yeah, which is 
I mean, it just smells like beer to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't really get that. I don't get it either. Yeah. But I mean, the can art is cool. It looks like they actually smuggled it in. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, this is really good. It's a really simple, hazy IPA. Yeah. It's it's really juicy. It's really smooth. I really like this. I like this a lot. I think this is one of those IPAs that I would give to someone who's like, ah, I don't like IPAs. This is, uh, you know, I don't like the real like kicky in the nuts IPAs. I've said that a ton. This is a very well balanced beer. I think this is a great like spring summer beer. Yes, this is a great outside grill yeah, beer. It's not a heavy beer either. It's no, got it's, a fairly thin mouthfeel for being a juicy it's, hazy. It's light. It's refreshing. It's smooth. It's not too aggressive. Yeah. This is delicious. It's really good. And honestly, from Big Grove, this is one of the better beers we've had yes. in a brewery. So it's awesome because we have had some beers from them that weren't that great. So it's awesome to see, you know, artists and brewers continuing to work at their craft and nailing something. Yeah, and smuggling something in. Yeah, so this was just kind of a discussion-based episode about demo discs. We love them. We're kind of fanatical right now. I have a feeling we're going to get quite the demo disc collection before yes. it's all said and done. In the comment section below, tell us your memories of demo discs because I know you have them. Yes. If you're watching this channel, you're probably in the demographic that had some good old demo discs. Did you pick one up at Pizza Hut? <laughs> Where were the random places you grabbed them? What are the memories you have about them? We would love to chat in the comment section below. And as always, guys, we appreciate you tuning in and subscribing to the channel. Cheers to the beloved demo disc. We will see you next time right here on gaming off the grid.